right, I think we are ready to begin. So um, thank you all for joining our session. Uh, get some more from your student feedback process with Evaluation Kit and Canvas. I'm Peter Pravikoff, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Evaluation Kit. This is my fourth InstructureCon, super thrilled to be here. Um, I was there when MC Hammer crashed the opening keynote. I actually left during the opening keynote because I showed up in business attire. Um, that's a typical first-timer mistake, and everyone was wearing Birkenstocks. So I dashed to put some shorts on, and when I came back out of the hotel, I hear, too legit, too legit to quit, and I thought for sure I'd walked out of the wrong door. Um, and I hadn't, of course. Um, this conference is a lot of fun. Hats off to our partners at Instructure for picking a great venue, um, putting together a great schedule, uh, the best swag in the business. And uh, we really wanted to get in on the fun this year. So hopefully some of you have, uh, have seen and maybe had an opportunity to ride some of those custom beach cruisers uh, sitting around the resort uh, that we branded for the conference. We had those shipped up and, and built up here so that you guys could get around in style. And uh, we're doing a contest. If you take a picture of yourself and tweet it with our hashtag and the conference hashtag, after lunch we're going to do a drawing and give away a custom bike that, uh, that you guys can customize and have shipped. So uh, part of our uh, approach to trying to get in on the fun uh, of this week. So um, with that introduction, we've got uh, a little over 30 minutes today and there are a handful of things that I'd like to, to be able to cover. Um, so my obje objectives are number one, introduce you to Evaluation Kit, the company, uh, and talk a little bit about our background. Of course, introduce you to Evaluation Kit, the solution. Um, for sure, we want to showcase our unique, one-of-a-kind turnkey Canvas integration, and we'll spend some time talking about that. And then finally, uh, talk a little bit uh, about our free pilot offer. Um, and we should have plenty of time for questions um, at the end, and uh, if some come up along the way, I'm happy to take those as well. So with that, let me start with some evaluation kit basics. We actually founded the company nine years ago and specifically set out to develop a solution for course evaluation in education. Initial focus was higher education. We've really seen um, a surge in interest from K-12 institutions um, as of late as well. I'm very proud to be an Instructor Alliance partner. I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, in a bit. So we've been busy for the last nine years. Um, last year, we grew to serve over 250 uh, institutions. This year, we should hit 300 um, without any uh, difficulty. And we serve every institution type imaginable. Uh, the large public uh, and private research institutions like Florida State uh, and Baylor University, small private liberal arts colleges like Occidental College and Kenyon College, uh, tons of community colleges and every institution type uh, in between. Last year we supported over 175,000 instructors and other campus administrators in their use of evaluation kit and over 10 million student surveys were administered across all of our customers. So a lot of great growth in the last nine years. As excited as we are about those numbers though, um, these next statistics are the ones that we're really proud of. These are sort of our version of pers persistence and retention statistics. Um, I alluded to a pilot. Uh, most of our customers start out as free pilots. Over 95% of those pilot institutions choose to continue with a license at the conclusion of their pilot. Um, and of those uh, customers, over 98% renew year in and year out with us. So institutions that implement the solution uh, tend to really love it and stick with it over time. Evaluation Kit, um, there was a session earlier talking about the evolution of LTI, and uh, one of our customers shared with me that in that session, we were at the very beginning of that, uh, that apex, that, that learning curve in terms of LTI. We were the first course evaluation provider to partner with Instructure about four years ago. Um, and we're proud to be the only course evaluation provider at their top alliance partnership tier. Ultimately, that translates into very deep, tight integrations for our customers, and we'll highlight those in the session today. For those of you that uh, follow the Canvas admin community blogs, a lot of great chatter over the last year and a half on course evaluations and integrating those with Canvas. Um, we follow those closely, of course, and we're thrilled to see our current customers talking about the success they're having with the solution. Um, everything from the ease of setup and integration to the success they're having at driving response rates and participation in their surveys. All the things we're after in terms of delivering value to our clients, really happy to see those comments um, on the blogs. And they're up there if anyone wants to check them out. Okay, so that's the introduction to Evaluation Kit the Company. Now let's talk about the solution itself. 
And when we think about evaluation kit, there's really four key areas we're focused on. Um, number one, we want to make sure the system's easy to implement initially. Beyond initial implementation, though, we want to make sure it's simple to manage on an ongoing basis. Uh, in the course evaluation business, response rates are king, and we're very focused on providing features that help institutions drive response rates and participation in their surveys. Um, and then fourth, and of course not last, is reporting. Taking all of this data that you're capturing through the student feedback process and transforming it into useful, actionable information and making it easy for you to get that information back out to faculty, back out to administration in the form of reporting. So these are the four areas we focus on. We'll have an opportunity to explore each of these as we go through this next section, starting with some key concepts around initial implementation, namely the integration and setup of a new evaluation kit account. The first way that we make initial implementation a breeze is by providing um, turnkey integrations into Canvas. And these integrations have two components. There's a data integration component and a user integration component. And they do different things for you. The data integration allows the institution survey administrator to actually search for and select the courses you'd like to evaluate and pull the information on those courses, the course info, the student info, the instructor info, pull that from Canvas into the survey solution. It's a very unique process. There are other ways to get that data into the system, but for our Canvas customers, they love the ease of use um, in our Canvas data integration. The other integration is perhaps what we're all a little more familiar with, and that's user integration, facilitating that single sign-on environment between Canvas and a system like Evaluation Kit for your students accessing surveys, but also for your faculty who may want to access the system to get into their reports or maybe add custom questions, et cetera. Um, we're going to explore these, and I'll show them to you um, uh, in, in the demonstration. But at this point, I really just want to emphasize the fact that these integrations are turnkey, meaning they've already been developed and tested. They've been implemented at dozens and dozens and dozens of Canvas customers already. And they only take about an hour for your Canvas admin to install and configure. So very, very straightforward integration process. How else do we make your initial implementation uh, straightforward? Well, um, we've got a lot of services designed to help get you up and running quickly. New customers can have their account spun up and ready uh, within five business days. We provide online instructor-led training um, and integration support to get that Canvas integration up and running um, in that hour conference call I mentioned. Of course, there's a robust help center with on-demand tutorials, help articles, um, videos that you can use to get all sorts of great information, context specific. Um, and then there's phone and email operational support to ensure that you get all the help you need as you implement your account and prepare for launching your first set of surveys. All right, so that's initial implementation. Now let's move into the ongoing management of Evaluation Kit. Um, for those of you that, that actually do the administration of surveys at your institution or are involved in it, um, I, I like to joke that the process is a little bit like painting the Golden Gate Bridge, right? Because you get to the end, and instead of being able to just rest and admire your work, no, you got to pack up, head to the other side, and start all over again, right? There really is no rest. Our goal is to make that process as simple as possible for you to repeat term in and term out. So we'll talk about a lot of features that make this process easy to set up initially and continue on an ongoing basis. There's two key areas we'll explore here. Um, surveys and projects. When we talk about a survey and evaluation kit, we're really talking about the survey instrument itself, the actual questionnaire. A survey project is where you do all of the work around setting up and administering evaluations generally for a given academic term. So two distinct concepts there. To, to look at these uh, features, we're gonna log into the system as the evaluation kit administrator. So this is sort of the system admin for evaluation kit. And when we log in, we land on a dashboard that really provides all the information you need related to your survey and evaluation process in one place. Um, everything from response rate information in real time at the top, status of your different survey projects um, down below. You can keep tabs on who's accessing results and how rapidly those results are being consumed. Um, and best of all, this dashboard's configurable. So as you become more familiar with the system, you can choose to move things around, choose to display certain things and not other things, ultimately customize this um, to your liking. 
surveys. In Evaluation Kit, there's a survey builder that allows you to create your own surveys. You can create as many as you like, and they're completely customizable. So your questions, your question formatting, uh, your response options, et cetera. You can see you've got the option of adding a variety of different question types, all of the different Likert type questions, as well as open-ended text response questions. You customize uh, the response scales, satisfaction scale, agreement scale, you name it. There's features that allow you to automate questions for Team Talk courses. So if you have courses with more than one instructor enrolled, you can designate specific questions on the survey to automatically repeat for each instructor so the students can provide instructor specific feedback in those areas. And then we'll talk about this a little bit later, but you also have the ability to create a tiered survey. So you can have a main survey with questions that apply to all courses. Then you can have subsets of questions we call targeted surveys that are geared towards specific types of courses, groups of courses, et cetera. So once the survey is created, we're now ready to create and deploy what we call a survey project in Evaluation Kit. And you can see I've got all of my past projects down there. They're organized by term. I can also create a brand new project up top. And when I go to create a new project, the system will ask me if I'd like to create a course evaluation project or a general survey project. General surveys are any surveys that um, aren't related to students enrolled in courses, right? Where you're not trying to capture feedback on a course specific basis. Maybe it's a first year student survey, um, an alumni survey, something like that. We're gonna stay focused on the course evaluation track. And so when we go to create a new course evaluation survey, we land on a project summary screen. And this screen is a great place to get a bird's eye view of sort of all of the steps involved in the process. And it's pretty straightforward. There are about six steps in all. And you work your way through the steps from left to right, starting with your project properties, moving into importing your courses and your students and instructors. You can then choose which survey or combination of surveys you want in this project, set up a communication plan, set up rules around reporting when you want the results to be distributed, and then ultimately de deploy your project. Okay, and those are all the steps. Project properties refer to everything from your basic project settings like the title of the project, the start and end date, to more advanced features. For example, do you want to allow instructors to be able to add their own custom questions for the surveys in their courses? If you say yes and turn that on, you can then limit the number of questions an instructor can add. You can even provide a window during which time they can add those questions, right? And you can put that cutoff date, gives you an opportunity to go in and audit those and make sure all the questions are appropriate and look good before you actually deploy the survey. Once you've got the project property set, you then move to the next step, which is telling the system which courses you're gonna evaluate and making sure all of that course data and the enrolled students and instructors are imported into your survey project and evaluation kit. Here's where that Canvas data integration comes into play. Okay, so we have the ability as a survey administrator to search for courses, right, through this interface and have the system retrieve those courses from Canvas, whether I want all of my fall 2016 courses or I just want a selection of courses in a long list of course unique IDs. I can search for those courses, tell the system to transfer all of the course info as well as the student and instructor information. We can even tell the system to generate course level survey start and end dates for each course based on the course start and end dates in Canvas. So if you need to survey some courses at the end of a 16 week term, but you have some mini mesters in there that are eight weeks long, you can automatically set up survey start and end dates based on the course start and end dates in Canvas, two weeks before that end date, 10 days before, et cetera. So the idea is to really help you automate this entire process, especially if you've got a lot of courses that are starting and ending at different times. Um, and when you import, all of that information pulls into your project. You can see it down below here. We can see all our students and instructors came across as well. And this is great as of now, but what happens if some of these enrollments change between now and when the survey, surveys are actually going to deploy? Well, we've created a Canvas enrollment refresh feature that allows you to set up a schedule upon which the enrollments will automatically refresh in your project based on changes that have taken place in Canvas. So if you want to add any students that have been added to Canvas courses to the surveys and evaluation kit, you can do that. If you'd also like to drop students that have been dropped from Canvas courses, you can do that as well. You can even automatically refresh instructors if that makes sense in your business process as well. So again, all about automation. Um, so those are some key features 
involved in um, really streamlining the ongoing administration of evaluations. There are a variety of other features that we provide specific to managing course evaluations that we'll just cover kind of at a, at a high level, kind of speed round. We talked about the ability to create project level dates or course level survey dates. So you have the option of having uniform survey dates or course specific survey dates. We have features that support team talk courses so that students don't have to fill out multiple surveys. You can just repeat the relevant questions for each instructor. There's support for cross-listed courses, so you can establish parent-child relationships between these courses and make sure the results map to the appropriate department or area. Um, you can create a targeted survey and uh, assign those targeted surveys to courses in specific departments, campuses, delivery types, et cetera. The ability to allow instructors to add their own custom questions to surveys. And you also have the ability to allow department administrators to add their own custom questions to surveys just for their courses. Um, the beauty of the custom questions and targeted surveys is that they assemble in one survey for a student. So you don't end up sending a student sort of three mini surveys. These are all blended into one survey that they're asked to complete. Again, helping uh, boost response rates by making it easy on your students. You have complete control over when results are going to be available to faculty and administration, and you can set different dates for each group. Um, you can even set dates down to the individual course level. So if some courses should have really, uh, results released sooner than others, you can uh, control that. And there are features that allow you to suppress results that maybe don't meet specific rules you have. For example, if your institution doesn't generate a course level report for a faculty member, if fewer than three surveys were submitted, you can set that up automatically in evaluation kit, in which case any course that got three or fewer responses didn't have an automatic course summary report generated. However, the three students that did fill that survey out, their feedback would still be incorporated in the higher level reporting at the department level, program level, uh, school level, et cetera. Ultimately, our goal is to make sure these add up to be all the features institutions need to manage their course evaluation process. The next phase we'll look at now that the survey set up is the student experience. And when we talk about the student experience, there's really one focus we have, and that is getting students to fill out the surveys. Okay, so everything we do in this area is designed to help make, the, make this process easy for students and give you tools to really drive students to participate. And that starts with providing a variety of different access options for students. Certainly, the centerpiece for us in this is the Canvas integration, and that's what we're going to look at first. You can supplement that Canvas access with one-click access via emails that you distribute. You have the ability also to provide single sign-on through a portal or a standalone login using CAS or Shibboleth or something of that nature. And of course, these options are mobile-friendly, so students can take their surveys on any device. Let's start by looking at the Canvas access. So as a student, when I go to log into Canvas and I land on my dashboard, I choose a course I want to access. It's at that point the integration between Evaluation Kit and Canvas checks to see if this user has a survey to take for this course. And if we do, we're interrupted. Okay? Much in the way you used to interrupt students with a paper survey in the classroom, and maybe some institutions still do. A student sits down, they expect a lecture, instead they get a form to fill out. Online, we're doing the same thing. Students going into the course, it's time to take surveys. Automatically, they receive this notification. In my case, uh, the notification it, uh, lets me know it's time to take my survey. You can customize that message, by the way. Um, and I have two options, go to survey or do it later. Some institutions don't want in, uh, their students to be able to procrastinate and do it later. That's fine. You can turn that off. Some institutions want to give them the option to procrastinate. You can leave it on. Some institutions find themselves in the middle ground um, where they leave it on for a portion of the survey window and then expire it towards the end. So, okay, you had your chance, but now it's time to go to survey. Um, if I click go to survey, it takes me right into the survey for this course. Okay? So what we're seeing is the survey served up by evaluation kit, but it's framed up within the Canvas interface. So the experience from a student perspective completely seamless. They can go through, answer the questions, submit the survey. You'll notice there's a come back later button and an exit button in my survey. I had the ability to suppress those as well. So if you really want to compel students um, to take the surveys, and for some programs, surveys are mandatory. A lot of medical schools, it's part of the professionalism requirement. Students have to take the surveys, in which case they would turn off the do it later option. Students go to the survey, 
the only option is to complete the survey and submit it. Okay? But again, you've got the flexibility. We want to provide our customers with the tools to be able to implement this in a way that's most appropriate for your population and institution. Um, and generally speaking, students go through, answer the questions, submit the survey. In addition to the notification upon course access, I can also automatically schedule calendar notifications in Canvas. So when the survey is open, new notifications appear on student calendars. Student clicks the notification, boom, taken right into the survey for that course, can complete the survey and submit. In addition to the Canvas access, we provide the ability to email students, inviting them to take surveys, reminding them to complete surveys. Um, these emails contain what we call a one-click link. It's an authenticated link. That click here looks generic. There's actually a unique code built behind it for each respondent. So as a respondent, when I click the link in my email, it takes me right into my account and evaluation kit, branded for the institution, and I see the surveys that I need to take. Because our interface is responsive, students can click that link from their smartphone, their tablet, their laptop, their desktop. Automatically, the interface will render in a format optimized for their device, so they can take it from any mobile device um, and quickly and easily submit those surveys. So you have multiple options for getting students to take those surveys. And most institutions use a combination of, of, of approaches. That brings us to our fourth and final area of focus, and that's reporting. So on the student side, we're focused on one thing, getting students to complete your surveys. On the reporting side, we have multiple priorities. We want to make sure that we're providing powerful, robust reports, but the best reports in the world don't do anybody any good if you can't find them and you can't figure out how to generate what you want. And so as important as it is to provide robust, sophisticated reporting, we also want to make sure those reports are easy to access and simple to navigate. Um, there's a variety of different reports that are provided in the system. Um, we've got standardized PDF reports available for every course. Uh, instructor reports that can summarize results by instructor across multiple courses. The ability to generate reports at the course section level or aggregate reporting for all sections of a particular course. You've got the ability to generate department summary reports if you're a department chair or administrator. Um, higher level administrators, deans and, and administrators in the dean's office can generate reports at the college level. There's even the ability to generate reports at the top level of the institution. Behind all of this, there's a hierarchical structure in the system that allows you to create and customize a hierarchy that mirrors your institution's academic organizational structure. And once you've done that, you enroll administrators at the appropriate levels, which in turn allows them to access the results for their area. So that's how all of that works. Um, some more advanced reporting allows you to compare uh, results across different instructors compare um, instructors to department averages, compare instructors over time, longitudinally, courses over time, departments over time. Bar charts allow you to really easily visualize the data, so those are baked into the reports in addition to the statistics, so you can kind of quickly at a glance get a feel for what's going on in a course or a department or an area. There's a whole lot in the system in terms of response rate reporting. You know, as, as important as response rates are to us and to our customers, we want to make sure you've got complete visibility into those response rates on a real-time basis, and I'll highlight those in just a sec. And then ultimately, you know, I'm always asked, can we get our data out of the system? Absolutely. It's your data. You can get these formatted PDF reports out of the system. You also can very easily get raw data out in Excel format if you want to put this in another system and manipulate it other ways. So um, again, the goal is to make the reports easy to access, simple to navigate, uh, but still offer good, powerful insight into the student feedback. Um, and so let's take a look at, at what these reports actually look like and how we get to them. As an instructor, I can access my results anytime from a link within Canvas. This is an LTI link that appears when I have something for me in Canvas. And so that link's there. If I want to go in, I click the link, it takes me into my Evaluation Kit account, and that dashboard is a faculty dashboard. So earlier we saw that uh, administrator dashboard that was chock full of information. A little more streamlined for me as an instructor. Um, at the top, I've got response rate information for my own courses. So as an instructor, I can keep tabs on how my courses are doing in terms of response rates. Um, I can access project results just below there, so that's where I'm gonna get access to my reports. And then down below is where, if I have the ability, I can access custom questions and tack on my questions to surveys for my courses for upcoming survey projects. 
But in my case, if I want to access my results, I click on project results. Um, this takes me into my summer 2014 term. Uh, it was a little bit of a relaxing summer. I taught American literature, uh, maybe online from Keystone. And um, here I can access my reports. And on the right, we see we've got a, a PDF report, PDF plus comments, a raw data extract. Um, I choose the report I want to launch, and that report comes up in a PDF format. So this is an example of one of those standardized PDF reports we can generate on demand for any course. So as a faculty member, this is available to me just as soon as the administrator makes it. Um, I come in, access the report. You can see for each report, we've got item by item analysis. So you can see the question, the response options, the weighting for each response option is given. We've got our frequency, frequency as a percent, percent in bar chart format um, off to the right. And then down below, we actually get a return rate on the question itself. So we know how many of our students in this course responded. Um, and then we see our mean, our standard deviation, and our median. Just to the right of those statistics, um, we've configured a couple of benchmark areas. So as an instructor, I can compare my ratings on this question in this course to the ratings across the entire university for this question and across my own home department. Okay, And that's what the bar chart on the far right is showing me as well. Yeah, question. If you didn't, uh, yeah, so let's say you just had a rule that you had cut out of the course and you had gone and looked at the burnout. There were problems with the way the course was going to Okay, so the question was if this were a course where the minimum number of responses uh, failed to be submitted, there weren't enough responses to meet the threshold for reporting, the instructor wouldn't see a course summary report for this course at all. But those two responses that did come in for this course would be available in aggregate courses reporting, so not at the section level, but you know all of the English 101 sections at the department level and so forth. Yeah, great question. Yeah, in the back. You mentioned that the report becomes available when the survey administrator makes it available. Is that also a trigger for the presence of the link on the report menu? So the question was, um, does the uh, link on the menu in Canvas appear based on when the survey results are available in Evaluation Kit? And the answer is yes. Um, the link is triggered based on when the results become available. If you leave the results available on an open-ended basis, so if my uh, you know, administrator said these results are available on July 31st and they will be available for as long as this instructor is with us, then that link would persist. It would always be there. If it was close-ended, and I didn't have anything for me in Evaluation Kit, it would disappear. So it's a smart LTI link. Yeah, great question. This is a report for one term. Okay, So it's one course, one term. The data is kept in your account for as long as you're a customer. And some institutions even bring their historical data with them in order to be able to generate longitudinal reporting in Evaluation Kit. So as an instructor, I can run a report that compares my results over time. Okay, And in this case, I see an instructor, Tom Brokaw, taught macroeconomics in the fall of 13 down here, spring of 14 in the middle, and then the fall of 14 up top. Um, this is comparing his results on one question, the overall instructor satisfaction question on the survey. And it's really useful, in this case, to, to use the bar charting. It helps us visualize. First term he taught this course, a lot of mediocre response. About 67% of the responses were neutral. But we can see a shift in those responses in the subsequent two semesters. And really, the shift is in those two upper areas, where the somewhat agrees went from 20% to 40%, doubled. The strongly agrees went from 5% to almost 15%. So really powerful in terms of showing the instructor the progress of those ratings over time. Yeah, question. Great question. So the question was, if instructors are able to add their own custom questions to surveys, are they added to their results? And the answer is, the custom. Do the custom questions. So the, the in, in the. In, in, um, to other instructors? Gotcha. Okay, so the question is if an instructor is adding a custom question to their surveys, 
Um, does that benchmark against uh, results across other courses? The answer to that question is no, because the questions that that instructor added are custom to that instructor. Other instructors may add different custom questions, and there's not a way to compare. In terms of the results for the instructor, those would be displayed on the instructor's results, and the institution can choose whether those results also show up on the administrator reports. A lot of institutions want to let instructors have the flexibility to add those questions, but not necessarily share the results with administrators. It's, yeah, so the question was, does the instructor have the ability to control that, um, whether or not the custom questions are um, shown to administrators? The, um, no, the institution has to make that decision. Now, if the faculty senate is in control of that and says, yeah, this is the way we want it, then that's the way it can be implemented for that institution. A Couple more things to share on reporting and then um, we've got some closing thoughts. Um, we have a variety of different reporting tools. So we've seen some of the different standardized PDF tools. Instructor means reporting is an administrator reporting area that, allow, uh, that allows an administrator to interactively sort and compare ratings for instructors and courses over one or more semesters. So a very classic example would be as a department chair, I want to ensure that all of my instructors are rating at least 3.25 or higher on a combination of two key uh, items on the survey. And so I could come in and say, hey, for the last two terms, I'd like to compare all of my instructors on those two, two key questions I select. I choose to aggregate the questions so I just get them averaged into one score, a mean of means. And when I hit search, I get a sortable list of results. I can sort low to high and see just about all of my instructors are above that threshold, but I've got one that's below. And from here, I can take a closer look or I can go back and change the parameters of my search and look at a broader period of time or a narrow period of time. I and mean, then ultimately when I'm done, I can export my results to Excel or to PDF. Project Results Monitor is an interesting area of the system that allows the administrator to really get visibility into access to results. So if you've just implemented a new process for course evaluations and you're eager to see that the instructors are accessing the results, this monitoring tool allows you to really get, get a bird's eye view of that. And we can see all of our administrators for this particular term have seen the results but only about a quarter of our instructors have had a chance to look at results. So maybe now is a good time to send a reminder. I can search for the instructors who haven't accessed results yet and send them a quick email saying, hey, just in case you forgot, results are available, click the link below or access through Canvas and they can instantly get access to their reports. And then the last reporting area um, to share with you today is an area we call results feedback. This is an area that allows you to establish really a dialogue around the course evaluation results where an administrator may be reviewing course evaluation reports, see some feedback from students that's really positive. Hey, that's great, I know you tried something new, I saw the student feedback, that's awesome. Um, I'd love for you to share that in the next department meeting. That feedback shows up as an alert for the faculty member who can see it from their dashboard and get an alert via email. They access the feedback, read it, and they can actually post a reply that goes back to the administrator and they can carry on that dialogue. So it's a neat tool for being able to really close the, the feedback loop with um, instructors and administrators. So that summarizes um, the system. And again, you know, we're, we're, we're here to help simplify the administration of your surveys, help you get a good response rate, and then ultimately transform those results into reporting. The last thing I wanted to touch on, and then we'll open it up for questions in the, in the few minutes we have left, is the Evaluation Kit Pilot. Now, I promised I'd share some details here. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. We allow you to pilot Evaluation Kit for one academic term, whether that's a quarter or semester. Um, it's the full version of the system, so it's not sort of a light version or a watered down version. It's everything we got. Um, and you can survey unlimited courses, have unlimited faculty and administrators involved in that process as well. We really look at the pilot as the way we onboard a new customer because in 95% of the cases that's, that's precisely what we're doing. The pilot also includes our turnkey Canvas integrations um, and, and we want to make sure you use those and get to experience those during the pilot as well as our support. Um, everything from your initial training and integration support, um, ongoing operational and of course access to the help center. And best of all it's free. Um, so with that I would just like to um, thank you all again for attending the session. 
We do have a, a booth downstairs, and I know I've seen a lot of you there, so I really appreciate you being here. If there are lots of questions um, and we, we run out of time, I'm happy to address more questions. We'll be downstairs until 5 today. But at this point, I'd just like to open it up for any additional questions you may have. Yeah, part, so the question is, how do we handle user authentication? And it really is a, the same for students and instructors. Yeah, we leverage LTI in that process. Um, we've got some extra stuff going on that helps with the survey notifications, but at its core, it's LTI, and that's how users are given permission to access evaluation kit. Thanks. Question over here. Uh, we have, <coughs> in the course evaluation course, there's the uh, specifics for the course, and they're also asked to take the, maybe two or three questions about either the college or the school that the course is associated with. If they're taking three courses in one college or school, do they only answer those questions one time, or would they have to answer those same questions every time they took the uh, evaluation? Gotcha. So the question was, if there are some questions in the course evaluation that are related to the course and others that are really more general to their experience at the institution, um, do those questions repeat in each course evaluation survey or only show up once? Um, it depends on how you implement it. If you implement those questions within a course evaluation, then they show up in the evaluations for each of the courses. What a lot of evaluation kit customers do is to create that as a general survey project, and they'll do one general survey per student enroll all of their students in that. And so the students, if they're enrolled in four courses, would have four course evaluations to complete and one general survey with those general questions that are institution-wide. Yeah, great question. Who else? Yeah. Great question. So the question is, if a student completes an evaluation through one method, does that automatically turn off the other notification methods, in a sense? And yeah, the answer is uh, absolutely yes. So if a student goes in through Canvas and completes an evaluation for a particular course, the next time they access that course, the notification no longer appears. They also would no longer receive email reminders based on that course. Of course, if they had other surveys to take, they'd continue to get an email reminder until they completed all of them. And vice versa applies as well. If they complete via the email link, they no longer get the notification when they log into that Canvas course. So it's definitely a reward system for the students. You know, you don't want to be bugged. Just take your surveys. Yes, question. Uh -huh. or yeah, great question. So um, some institutions survey every course every term. Other institutions only survey subsets of courses, and they have a variety of different rules over which courses um, are, are going to be surveyed. Uh, you have a couple of options in that case. You can still use our Canvas data integration, in which case what a lot of institutions will do is just copy and paste that list of course codes for the courses to be evaluated into the search box in our data integration, and our system will only retrieve courses that match on those course unique IDs. That's one way to do it. You also have the liberty of uploading a file, flat file, of that data. We can set up an FTP process as well if for some reason the Canvas course data isn't the best source for you to use in populating your course evaluations. Yeah. Right here. Oh. The, the data integration actually leverages the Canvas APIs. Um, the user integration is what uh, leverages the LTI. So just two different TLAs, two three-letter acronyms. But, um, but yeah, it's all turnkey. It's all part of that turnkey integration we provide. Does the Canvas course have to be published in order for the student to be notified of the evaluation? Great question. So the question was, does the Canvas course have to be published in order for the student to be notified? And the answer to that question is no. Um, they won't get a notification in Canvas because they don't have access to that course on their Canvas dashboard, but they'd continue to receive the email notifications that you'd set up in your communication plan in Evaluation Kit. And when they finish their, their survey, so let's say they have two Canvas courses that are published and two unpublished, so four surveys total. If I finish one of my surveys in Canvas, once I submit it, the system delivers me to a dashboard that conveniently displays all four of the courses that I'm enrolled in, so you can kind of catch them on the back end. Great question. Qu 
question was, how do users in Canvas uh, access their dashboard? So instructors can access through the link in their Canvas course or through email or direct login. Students can access through the link in email or through um, the notification that appears in Canvas. Some institutions also have a direct login page that they direct students to. That's where CAS, Shibboleth, and LDAP come into play. I think that's all the time we have. Um, I'm going to shut off now. Thank you very much again. And if you've got additional questions, I'll, I'll meet you outside. Thanks very much.